Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, final array state after k multiplication operations one. The idea is pretty simple. We're given an array of numbers. We're also given an integer k. k is five in this case, so we want to perform five operations. For each operation, it's pretty much already pre-decided, like we don't have a choice of which operation to do. We are always going to pick the minimum element from the array of elements, and then we're going to multiply it by the multiplier, which in this case is 2, so we're going to double this number, and then it'll be replaced with a 2. So you can see that after one operation, the new array looks like this. We have a 2 over here now. Next, we're going to do the same thing, get the minimum among these. Now we actually have two minimums, so there's a tie. So we will just pick the leftmost two and then double it, so we'll get a four in that spot. Once again, the minimum element is going to be a two. It's going to be this one. We double it, get four. You just keep going like that until you end up with this array. We're not trying to minimize or maximize anything. We just return the final array. So it seems like there's not a lot of room for creativity in this problem. So we just mainly need to figure out what is the fastest way to do the simulation. In the worst case, I mean brute force, we can just take the input array. Whether you want to create a copy of it or not, I guess it's up to you. You probably could modify the input if you want to, but generally that's not recommended. So we'll create a new array. And then just doing a simulation on that for every operation, in the worst case, we might have to scan through the entire input array because we might end up changing the same element multiple times. Like maybe all of these numbers are really, really big and we have a one over here. We might end up scanning through that portion of the array multiple times to do the operation on the same element multiple times. So in the worst case, time complexity is going to be uh, O of N, like scanning through the entire thing. We have to do that K times. It'll be N times K in the worst case. And the bottleneck from doing that, if you actually think about what's going on in the brute force, what are we doing? We're having to iterate over the entire input array to potentially get what the minimum element is before we can do the operation on it. And that is the linear time part of this code. Now, you might think that maybe there's a clever solution to this problem. Well, first of all, given that this is an easy problem, there probably isn't going to be a super clever, greedy algorithm to this one. At least that wouldn't be like the suggested approach. But there's a pretty easy optimization we can make to this with a data structure that you've hopefully heard of. It's called a heap. If you haven't heard of it, there are plenty of resources on NeatCode.io which will teach you all about heaps. There's plenty of animations, practice problems, all that stuff. But you pretty much have to know what this data structure is because basically it will optimize the get min for us. It'll take it from being a linear time operation to actually being a log time operation. So this is how it's going to work. We basically throw all of these numbers into a data structure called a min heap. And from that min heap, we will be able to get the minimum in log n time. So right now our heap will look like this. One, two, three, five, and six. We're going to get the minimum, which is one, and then we're going to double it, and then we're going to add it back to the heap. So we'll add a two back. Now the heap pushing and popping from it, it's going to be log n time operation, but we guarantee that they will still be sorted in some sense, since this is a heap. And we kind of just keep going like that. So we get the minimum once again, it's going to be a two, uh, get rid of it, and then re-add the double of it. So we get a four here, and we kind of just keep going like that. Of course, every time we update a value in the heap, we also update it in the input array. So we would get an update something like this. Um, maybe this one became four and this one became two. I guess we could have also left this as a two and made this one as a four. Not that it really matters. Well, actually, now that I think of it, of course, it does matter because in the case that there is a tie, we want to pick the leftmost element. Okay, so how can we do that with the heap? Because if we only add the elements to the heap, like the numbers themselves, then we kind of lose the index. When you pop an element like two, how do you know which index it goes at? Well, in many languages, you can implement like a custom comparator. So what you would do is instead of adding the elements themselves, each of them has a unique index, zero, one, two, three, et cetera. You'd add the indices to the heap. And then for the comparator, rather than using the indices, which would give us like this as the minimum, this is the second minimum, et cetera. We would use a custom comparator where we map that index i to the actual number it represents. And then 
the heap logic would be implemented with that. Python actually makes it easier for us though. We can just add a tuple, a pair of elements. The first element will be the element itself, n, because we want to use that for the precedence. But if there is a tie, then we want to use the index i. So smaller indexes will win. So this is the pair of elements that we will be adding to the heap. So for example, this three over here, it would actually look like, well, the element is three, the index is two. So this is what that element would look like. So this allows us to solve the problem more efficiently. We will get the time complexity down to be k times log n rather than times n. So now let's code this up. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually just create a copy of the input array nums. So nums, now there's many ways to do this in Python. I will do the double colon this time. And this is what we want to return when we are finished. First thing we want to do is build the heap. I'm going to use something called list comprehension in Python. So I'm going to say for i n in enumerate, and we're going to enumerate the list of nums, and then here we're going to have the pair n i. It has to be in this order. That's important. I know that this line looks kind of magical. There's many things going on here. I won't explain every little detail about it, but this is called list comprehension. This is a tuple. This is a numerate. You can learn all these things in my Python for Coding Interviews course. It teaches you all these tips and tricks. Right now, this is actually not a heap. It's just an array of tuples. To make sure that it has the sorted property of a heap, we're going to do heap q dot heap uh, if I on this array. It'll basically make sure that this is actually in the form of a heap in linear time. Okay, now we want to run the simulation. So do the operation k times. So let's say for underscore in range k. And then we want to pop from the heap, heap q dot heap pop min heap. And we get the pair n i. Now there's two things we want to do. First, we want to double the element. Well, not necessarily double it, I guess. Just multiply it by this multiplier that we are given as a parameter. So we want to take the element at index i, so results at index i, and originally um, it has a certain value here. We can just take that value and multiply it by the multiplier. We could have also set it to n times the multiplier, but I don't think it makes any difference. We also want to make sure we add the new value to the heap. So heap q, heap push to the min heap, this same pair, which is, um, well, the value itself is result at index i and the index is i. So I think we're good. Let's give this a run. For some reason, I had a plural and s here. That's my bad. Okay, now you can see that it works and it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, definitely check out neatcode.io. This is the Python for Coding Interviews course I was talking about, by the way. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.